Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about a storage device, a storage network which you will use in a business, in an organization for storing data, for storing virtual servers, etc., etc. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And we are talking about these things today. We're gonna to go over what this is, what a storage device is, what a SAN is, what are their functions essentially, why would I use one? Um, really, in short, a storage device such as this is gonna be used in an enterprise, in a business place, to store a whole bunch of data. Essentially, a unit like this can be expanded significantly. You can add multiple levels of additional disks, disk arrays, but this will easily go into the petabytes without concern, as long as you have the money and the resources and the space in a rack to be able to continually expand the storage. It's going to be used for our VMware virtualization uh, environment. So essentially I've got all of my servers set up and they need to share some storage. I'm gonna be creating different storage pools. I'm gonna be creating what's called LUNs, uh, which essentially are blocks of disks, which I can then allocate into VMware, set them up as a data store, and then build my VMs and allocate those VMs to a particular data store for storage. The good thing about having something like this as opposed to having the storage on the server is that I've got one centralized location for all of my storage, I've got multiple levels of redundancy on my storage as well, and I'm not limited to the storage on a server, for example. So this is a SAN. It can also be configured as a NAS. So this is essentially a storage unit uh, for um, your, your business. You generally wouldn't have something like this in a home environment. Generally for a small, medium, or large organization, you'd set up something like this that would be rackable. As you can see, it's a rack-spaced unit. So on the side of these, you're gonna put your rails and then actually put it into a cabinet. So this one is a Dell EMC Unity. Uh, and as I said, it can be configured as a SAN or a NAS. The main difference has been that a SAN is a storage area network, which is block based. So you'll use it for something like VMware or some virtualization technology, or a NAS can be configured for SMB shares, NFS shares, which essentially acts like a file server. And you'll see here, um, I've got, this is essentially just a panel that's on the front of the unit itself. There's a little keyhole here where you can open and uh, close or lock it, I, sh I should say, so that you can't actually take this panel off. So this is just a fancy panel to make the actual device look uh, enticing, make it look nice. But you'll see that on either end, you've got these little latches that if you pull, you actually get the panel to come off. And you'll see the inside of the unit, well, the front of the unit anyway, without the panel. You'll see that here, I've just got a number of hard drives connected. So these are the hard drives that are on this particular SAN or NAS device. You'll see that they are SAS drives. These particular ones are 1.8 terabytes and they are 10K speed. So they're, this is essentially the speed of the disks themselves. And they're easily just slottable right here. And you'll see that all of these slots here are empty. So to essentially you know, insert and remove a disk, you just click on the little latch, just the bottom here. You'll see the little, the little latch comes up and you just slide the hard drive right out. So this is just a standard two and a half inch you know, disk drive. You can get storage which has uh, the larger three and a half inch, but these are you know, two and a half. They are Dell EMC drives. We've got a whole information there about the drive themselves, 1.8 terabytes. You see that the hard drive is just within a normal enclosure. So you've got the connector for the hard drive right here into the connector, into the adapter here, which then would slide in. So this is just a standard enclosure that uh, is required. And then to put it in, you literally just push it in and then put the latch down like so. So you see that all of these are empty. So when I do require some additional hard drive space, I literally just purchased these new hard drives. Um, you can cross the um, the vendors, so you can buy, say, a Seagate or a Western Digital hard drive, um, and add them in. Generally, it's a good recommendation to try to keep the vendors the same, keep the models the same as much as possible, even though they will work if they are different models, and try to keep the space th to the same as well. A good example is what what I can do is when I when I power this unit on, I can configure. The, uh, the the you know the disks to be in groups of raided disks in different pools. So I can say have these five disks right here set up in a raid five pool. If I then add some more disks and I want to add them to an existing pool that may exist, 
uh, I may not be able to if they're different sizes. So you always want to try to keep it the same size if you do need to expand a particular pool. Um, otherwise, you can buy different size discs if you want to create some new pools of new discs. But either way, what you do is you literally will just take this out like so, and then you slot a new hard drive in with the enclosure itself. And this is literally just to cover, just to cover this uh, empty hole. Uh, it doesn't actually have anything on it as you can see, but obviously we'll leave this on here because there is no hard drive. On the side of the unit, you've got your little tag, which if you pull this out, has some information about your actual uh, SAN NAS device, your storage device, including the serial number um, that you can look up for warranty reasons. So here we got the rails of the actual uh, SAN or NAS device. This is going to be attached to the side of my unit right here. So you'll see that on the back. Essentially, I just slot this part out. Put that aside. And then I will just screw that in. So I'd actually put it onto the side of the unit, screw it in, uh, and then on my rack itself, on my actual cabinet, I would attach this to the actual side of my, to the front and to the back of my cabinet. So this would slot in, all right? And then that is fastly in place. And then I can literally just grab my actual NAS sand device with this side attached, obviously all screwed in, and it should be able to just slide into place. So here is the back of the uh, storage device, all right? Now, generally most storage devices are uh, set up to have dual storage processes. They're called SP, storage processes, which is essentially is what contains the CPU, the RAM, the peripheral devices, etc. And there's generally two of them for high availability and redundancy. Um, the reason you do that is obviously if you only have one, uh, which contains one power, one network point, etc., etc. If there's a problem with that storage um, processor, then your entire SAN or NAS will become unavailable. So there are two here for the purpose of redundancy, high availability, uh, and also an element of load balancing so that they, you know, they can take equal amounts of load rather than putting all the load on one particular storage processor. So you'll see that each storage processor has a power, all right, you obviously want to power the unit, and if this one goes down, then this one is still powered and you're still good to go. So the general way that you would set this up is you'd obviously be running one power into one rail, one the other power into a different rail, into different power sources for high availability, because again, there's no point in having the power running from two you know, different storage processes into the one uh, power rail, into the one uh, PDU. Um, and then that PDU goes down, that power rail goes down, and then you lose power. So you've got a couple of connectors here as well, which are used to connect multiple units together. So once this particular unit is full of disks uh, and you wanna buy some additional disks, you, you buy what's called a disk array, which is essentially a separate disk array, which is going to be connected via these connectors right here, daisy chaining them together, essentially to form a larger pool of disks, which you can then use to uh, splice up and slice your storage as needed. Got a couple of fibers connectors here, standard LC connectors uh, to actually connect into, uh, into a fiber switch or directly into a server that has fiber connectivity. So you're gonna be using fiber cables for those. And then we've also got our ethernet connectors right here. This is 10 gigabit ethernet. I'm gonna be running my ethernet ports, uh, my ethernet cables into these and then likewise into subsequent uh, switches or directly into a server if I've only got one server. But generally you're gonna run these into different switches. Uh, and then you'll see that there are two per storage processor. Again, that is all set up for redundancy, for load balancing. And obviously good practice is to have those running into different switches. Uh, otherwise it defeats the purpose of having load balancing uh, and high availability. If your switch goes down, then everything will go down. Got a couple of other ports. You've got one gigabit ports as well on each storage processor. And then a management port as well. We can actually use to connect into the device to perform management and do everything that you need to do from a console perspective. So the actual storage processor essentially starts from here to here and from here to here, each having their own subsequent power. You can easily just change the power unit. So if this particular power uh, became unavailable, you can easily just pull this one out as well, slot it out completely, buy a brand new one. And you'll see that there's actually module slots here. So on each different 
set, I guess, here of your uh, of your storage device, is you can add additional cards, essentially additional functionality to each of the units. So if you need to buy some another fiber card, you need to buy some more, um, you know, network points, whatever it may be, um, purchase them, slot them straight in here, you're good to go. All right, and again, these are just really just covers to just protect uh, the insides rather than just having an empty hole as normal. So the unit powered on. So you've got a nice blue LED to let you know that things are all working as expected. And then each corresponding disc has got its own subsequent LED to let you know whether the disc is working well, whether it needs replacement. You see that there's actually lights to the right of each disc, which will be turning a different color, uh, generally a red or, or an orange, to let you know that there's something gone wrong and requires a disc replacement. So we are here now inside of our comms room. This is our comms cabinet. Uh, we are going to be racking the unit. And you'll see that I've just got a number of slots here. So essentially I'm going to attach the rails on the left and on the right. And then once that is in on the front and on the back of the unit, I can then slide my device in as normal. And then I'm good to go. I can then connect it. I can connect it into my particular, to my particular switches, into my particular powers on my left and then right and then get that on the network and go ahead and configure it and then use it. So here is an example of a device that is racked. So you've got the cabinet right here. You've got the rail that's hooked up into the cabinet and then you've got the actual system itself which is connected to the rail. You see the top, this is the actual unit itself and then the rail runs all along the side here and it's actually you know, mounted into the actual side of the system and then onto the front and now to the back. So most units will either be 2RU or 1RU or more, depending on how big it is. This particular unit, that the example that we're looking at here, this is a 2RU unit. So it's taking up two rack unit spaces. A 1RU would essentially be half of that space. And you'll see that right here, it's actually going to be clicked into one spot, but is capable of taking up to the 2RU. So obviously whenever you're racking uh, one of these systems, you wanna make sure that you've got enough capacity, enough storage space, to be able to accommodate either the 1RU or the 2RU or larger space. The powers are going to be running, as I said, into either a left or into a right. Here we've got the left one, so all of my left powers are running into this side. And then my right's running into my right side. And I guess what's helpful about here is I've got them color coordinated, blue and red, to let me know which one is left and which one is right. So there you have it. That is my quick overview of a storage unit, a SAN. What it does, what are the features, what's its purpose, Hope you found this helpful. If you did, I would love it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Digital Byte Computing for a whole bunch of more videos.